If you've ever poured your heart into growing tomato plants only to watch their delicate yellow flowers wither and drop without producing fruit, you know just how frustrating and confusing it can be. One moment your tomato plants are blooming with promise, the next, those blooms are shriveling and falling off like nothing ever happened. But don't worry, you're not alone. This is one of the most common problems tomato growers face, and thankfully there are organic proven solutions that can help you reclaim your harvest. Let's get straight to the root of the issue. No fluff, just the real reasons your tomato flowers are dropping. And more importantly, how to stop it organically and effectively right here on Soil and Crop Central. Flower drop in tomato plants is usually not the result of disease or pests, though those can sometimes play a role. The most frequent culprits are environmental stress and pollination failure. In other words, the plant isn't sick, it's reacting to something wrong in its surroundings or reproductive process. When temperatures soar beyond 90 degrees Fahrenheit, especially when highs hover above 95 degrees, tomato pollen becomes sterile. Tomato pollen is naturally not very mobile. It needs either vibration, wind, or pollinators to be moved from the male anthers to the female pistil. But when exposed to high heat, the pollen dries out before it can fertilize anything. This sterilization effect renders the plant's efforts useless, causing flowers to dry up and fall off. Lack of pollinators compounds the problem. If you're not seeing bees, hoverflies, or even wind making its way through your tomato patch, pollination just can't happen. Some varieties of tomatoes have flowers with a pistil that sits higher than the pollen-producing anthers, which honestly makes natural pollination even harder without a bit of external help. Another hidden contributor is poor timing. Tomato flowers are most fertile in the early hours of the morning. If pollination doesn't happen within that brief window, either because it's too hot, too humid, or there's just no movement, the opportunity is lost, and the flower drops within days. One of the simplest organic methods to prevent flower drop is hand pollination. It might sound a little tedious, but when done correctly and consistently, it really does dramatically increase fruit set. The key is to do it early in the morning, ideally before 9 a.m. when the pollen is still fresh and viable. To pollinate by hand, gently shake the plant or use an electric toothbrush, a soft paintbrush or even your fingers to mimic the natural vibration of bees. You're trying to move the pollen from the anthers to the pistil within the same flower. If you're growing multiple plants you can even cross-pollinate between flowers. But remember, timing is everything. Doing this in the heat of the afternoon won't help. By then, the pollen is often too dry and dead to fertilize anything. Morning movement is your sweet spot. If you're looking for a 100% organic, safe, and powerful way to support flower fertilization, especially when pollination conditions are tough, liquid seaweed extract is one of the best natural solutions available. Seaweed extract is a plant-based biostimulant that contains naturally occurring growth hormones like cytokinins, auxins, and gibberellins. These compounds improve pollen viability, help flowers stay fresh longer, and support natural fertilization even during periods of heat stress. Here's exactly how to use it. Mix 10 milliliters or about 2 teaspoons of liquid seaweed extract with 1 liter or 1 quart of water. Shake well and spray this solution directly on the flower clusters in the early morning, two to three times a week during peak flowering. This helps keep the flower structures hydrated and fertile, boosts internal hormone balance, and gives your tomato plant a much better chance of setting fruit without any synthetic chemicals. It also encourages root growth, disease resistance, and overall plant health, making it a win-win for your garden. So, when it comes to picking a seaweed extract, you really want to choose a cold-pressed one with no synthetic additives. And, uh, don't forget to look for organic certification on the label. Oh, and be sure to store it in a cool, dark place to help keep its potency. Let's talk genetics for a minute. Not all tomato varieties are created equal, you know? Some are just way more heat-tolerant and pollination-friendly than others. If you happen to live in a hot or humid climate, it's a good idea to go for cherry tomatoes or those small fruited hybrids. These types tend to have more volatile pollen and honestly, more cooperative flower structures, which means they pollinate easier and set fruit more reliably, even when the weather gets stressful. 
Now, in contrast, those big beefsteak varieties can be absolutely stunning in size, but uh, they're often pretty fussy when it comes to pollination. Their flower structure usually puts the female and male parts further apart, so you'll need either some real precision with hand pollination or just perfect weather conditions to get good results. So when you're picking seeds for next season, keep this in mind. If you're short on time and can't hand pollinate every morning, it's honestly better to stick with varieties that are known for dependable fruit set. Even if you're all in on hand pollination, you still want to build a garden that naturally attracts pollinators. This creates a long-term self-sustaining ecosystem where your plants thrive with less daily intervention. Plant native flowers, herbs like basil and barrage, and companion plants that draw bees, butterflies, and beneficial insects to your garden. Avoid chemical pesticides that repel or kill pollinators. Keep water sources nearby and avoid mowing or trimming blooming plants during peak foraging times. With consistent effort, your garden can become a humming, buzzing, productive paradise, one that takes care of your tomatoes while you're sipping coffee in the shade. Since heat is the number one trigger for sterile pollen and flower drop, finding ways to manage temperature is crucial. You can't change the weather, but you can adjust your microclimate. Use shade cloths during peak afternoon heat to lower the temperature around your tomato plants. Choose light-colored mulch to reflect heat and retain soil moisture. Water deeply in the early morning to keep the plant hydrated and stress-free throughout the day. When things cool down, usually in late summer or early fall, your tomatoes will naturally bounce back and start setting fruit again. The key is keeping your plants healthy and alive through the stress so they can pick up right where they left off. Every gardener hits a wall at some point. Watching those flowers drop with no tomatoes in sight can feel like a blow. But with the right tools, timing, and care, you can turn things around organically. The process requires patience, daily attention, and a bit of science, but the reward is a basket full of juicy tomatoes that were grown with intention and love. Here at Soil and Crop Central, we're in this journey together. Whether you're hand-pollinating your flowers before sunrise, spraying a mist of seaweed extract, or shading your plants to beat the summer heat, you're building a smarter, stronger garden. If this helped you reclaim your tomato harvest, be sure to subscribe to the Soil and Crops Central channel, share this video with your gardening friends, and drop a comment below with your favorite tomato variety. Let's grow better, together, organically, every season.